Welcome back. In the last episode, we've made sure we can display our little menu that we've laid out. And while we're displaying it, we've frozen the character's movement and look input. We also made the mouse cursor available, so appear that we can actually go and select things from the menu, or that, that is obvious to us where the mouse is. And we've made the whole thing disappear again at the touch of another button. Let's just quickly review how we did that. This is the current state of the project. Gray businesswoman running around in the gray level. It's all very gray, isn't it? The moment we hit the bottom Alt button, all the characters come up. Our cursor appears here, the little mouse cursor here. And I can click the first or the second button. Those are the only two that we've hooked up. And in the bottom left hand corner, we can see that a message appears. That's super exciting so far. Nothing happens when I click the third, fourth or fifth character because we haven't hooked that up yet. I'm aware that I was maybe going a little bit fast in my last video, so I wanted to I wanted you to have a clearer look at what we've done here. So we've got a new graph that's called Menu Shenanigans on which we have the input action Summon Menu. We're querying is the menu currently visible, and we're doing the opposite of what this thing currently states. The top branch shows the menu, the bottom one hides the menu again. This is quite a lengthy function, so I was thinking maybe we're going to compartmentalize that into a function, and that's exactly what we did. So if the menu is currently visible, we're hiding it. If it's not visible, we're showing it. This is compartmentalized on two function tabs, namely this one, Show Menu, where we're going to grab a reference to our menu, and we're setting its visibility for now. We're going to change this later and make the menu animate in a little bit. Then we're going to go and set our variable that tells us is the menu visible or not. We're grabbing a reference to our player controller from which we can then go and set the mouse cursor to enabled. That means it is showing that little white thing that's currently showing right now underneath the orange highlight, the little arrow. We're showing that. We're then setting the input mode to game mode and UI, focusing on our selection menu. If we don't do that, the player has to click once, nothing happens, and then click again to actually make a selection. So by focusing on the selection menu, that menu is already in focus, like widget in focus. Then we're going to ignore the move input and the look input, setting that to on, like I've forgotten in the previous video, setting that to on so we can no longer move around or look around. The character itself is still breathing, so it's still animated. That's what we've done there. In the second part, under Hide Menu, we're doing exactly the opposite. We're setting the menu to Invisible. We're setting our own variable to Is Menu Visible to Off. We're setting the mouse cursor to Off. We're setting the input mode to Game Only. And we're resetting the look and the move input. That's what our current Summon Menu function or input action does. The actual reaction to the button happens in the selection menu. So that is our actual thing here that we've put under UI. That's this file selection menu. That's the blueprint widget in which that is happening, that we're reacting to these button presses. So I've hooked up the first two events in the graph, and they're currently just printing out a couple of strings. I'm going to go get rid of that and devise a function that will pass the new skeletal mesh up into the character and change it directly there. Let's see if we can make it happen. What we need for that is a function up here. Let's go and create a function on our selection menu and call that change mesh, because that's kind of what it is. We could also call it change character. Maybe we'll call it change character. Actually, change mesh describes better what it is. And that opens up a new kind of page here. And that's I, I like these little code snippets to be compartmentalized into little into little new sheets here. Because I want to use this function multiple times, I'm going to have an input here that tells me what mesh needs to be put in here so that we can set it on our character. So that is happening. Usually that's on the right hand side here, but in the in the blueprint widget, it's kind of on the left bottom here. In fact, this is input and output values. We need an input value. So let's go and create one and call it, simply call it a uh, new mesh there. It's supposed to be a value of type, not Boolean, but skeletal mesh. So let's see if we can find it here. Skeletal, there it is, skeletal mesh. This is it 
object reference little little man icon here that's the the kind of input we need and with that we now have a new input so when we get to press a button we can then go and call change mesh on here and just simply pass in a new mesh of say for the first guy it's going to be the businessman in a shirt and then for the second character we're going to do the same thing here just go change mesh and then we're going to go and say well this is now the second person from the list which is businessman in a suit and that's how we're going to do that the actual mesh changing that's something we're going to devise in here but just to quickly recap the actual changing is happening on the character so in the viewport i have a reference here that if i go and select the mesh i can go and change it to anything i want so the first button is going to do this then the second button is technically going to do this that's the functionality that we want to achieve i'll go and go back to perhaps her or maybe actually go back to a woman in a in a business suit here as our as our character so this is what i want to do for that i need to grab a reference to my character and then go and set this skeletal mesh right here let's see if we can work out how to do that first of all i do need a reference to my character i could grab one here every time when i press this button but i'd rather set a variable for that and so let's go into the event graph and there's something that's there's some of these are grayed out event preconstruct is a, is a good one to use so we'll go delete these two event preconstruct let's go and grab ourselves a reference to our character and store it as a variable so let's go and get our player character once we have that, we need to use a cast because we don't have a generic one. We have one that is called Sinti character. So we need to go and cast it to that. We can do that. Go and say cast to Sinti character. And with that cast, I now have access to all the variables and bits and pieces that are on that character. So all I need to do here right now is just promote this to a variable and perhaps call that one the character. That happens only once at design time. I just go and maybe go and uh, add runtime, sorry. <laughs> go and drag a thing around this. Press C so that I remember what I do here. Grab a reference to our character. So I can go and reuse it if this function gets expanded later, I can go and drag other bits and pieces, other comments around us. So I remember what I'm doing there. So change mesh now passes in that mesh. We now have a reference to the character. So let's go grab that. Get the character. And on it, we want to go and on this character, we want to go and set the skeletal mesh on his actual mesh so that's that's quite nice that unreal engine now has a reference to the mesh i can't just go set it on the character i need to grab a reference to the mesh on the character and it's already hooked that up and the mesh that i want to pass in is literally this so i'm going to go and hook up my input into the function to that new mesh which hopefully yes it works look at that perfection i don't know if i want to stack it maybe i will go and and leave it out here so we can we can see what that what that really does so our function change mesh grabs a reference to my character from the character we're going to get a reference to our mesh and it is that mesh that we're setting with a new mesh and that new mesh is in fact set with depending on the button that we press so button one sets this guy button two sets this guy so it looks like we're going to have a lot of work to do hooking up all the other buttons let's just see if it works for now just in principle bring up the menu press the first button dude changes into other character press the second button different guy oh my god this is exciting or oh, what this is super exciting press the first button this character looks like that second button new character oh my god this is exciting so fairly straightforward if you know how to do it and now all we need to do is set up all the other buttons and have a quick look at the background of these actual buttons to so make that look a little bit a little bit nicer 
Look at that, we can walk around as a new person. That is seriously cool. Another cookie for us. Or another cup of coffee, depending. Woo! -hoo! Jumping for joy. I love it. Let's make the other characters follow suit. So literally the easiest way to hook these things up is literally by uh, selecting the next character, so character 3, and click that button. We can just go copy this, copy and then paste that here, hook that up. Just make sure it's the third character in the list, which is businesswoman now. Fourth button, oh sorry, that's the third character, fourth character. Go paste that in. The beauty of doing it this way is we can now go back to the change mesh function and if this is not enough here, if we need to do other things to it, we can make that happen. But the actual hookup of the button, we won't have to do again. So this now one, two, three, four, uh, female coat perhaps. Fourth character, we can, we can go and move them around in a, in a moment here. Character five, add an event. Hook that up and make that female jacket, female cold female jacket. Button six. Feel free to, to watch this in twice the speed if you like. Female police officer, I believe, is the next one. Character seven. Or if you're following along, you know, don't forget to pause the video. If you're doing this step by step with me, if I'm a little bit too fast. Uh, don't be afraid to pause the video, speed up my ramblings, or slow them down. Watch them again. I have to do this frequently to do things. So just literally watch things again and again until they're in my brain. <laughs> but once they're in there, it's kind of nice that you know that you can then recall things. And also, uh, if you have any questions, don't forget to ask them in the comments. I'm more than happy to, if the, if it's within my power, to answer them. I want to grow, make this maybe a block of four by four, for maybe three by three. Maybe that's better. <laughs> maybe three by three. So grab these, put those here, and then grab this and put that here. This is like a little mini game inside Unreal Engine, isn't it? Making sure the the things look nice and and all the the comments are there, the, the lines and the notes look funky. There we go. Now we've got a block of three by three here and we can go and drag thing around this, comment it and say change character. There. So just to reiterate what I've done here, each button puts in a new mesh into the function called change mesh. This is something we've written on the selection menu. In change mesh, all we're doing is we're taking that input and putting it into the new mesh of the set skeletal mesh function, which grabs a target from our character, uses the mesh, and then uses our new mesh to put it onto the current mesh. We're getting a reference to our character from the event graph. That's the first thing that we've done here in the event pre-construct that we're grabbing a reference to our regular player character, casting this to our specific Sinti character, and then we're storing that in a value, in a variable, and that is why we can access it in there. Let's see if it works. Play, make it full screen, bring up the menu. In fact, woman, uh, dismiss the menu. Dismiss the menu, menu. Menu can't be dismissed, what a shame. I can't move anymore either. Oh my god, major catastrophe. Unreal Engine has crashed. It doesn't react to escape anymore. <laughs> I think there's a bit of a major, major issue here. Okay, go. Let's, let's go try this again. Let's go try this again. <laughs> if Unreal Engine isn't behaving the way you expected it, it could literally be that it crashes. I've had this sometimes that I have to just go and restart the whole thing and my program is actually perfectly fine. Probably doesn't hurt if I had saved everything, which I haven't done. Let's go menu. Dismiss menu. Okay, it works again. Okay, great. So first character, yes. Second character, yes. Let's just see if the icons appear as they are. Yes. Second woman, yeah, except for the hair color. I've given her a different hair color in the icon just because otherwise we'd have three blondes in a row and they all look very similar. That's the only reason why I've done that. So far, all the characters appear to be doing what we want. 
we select one, press Alt again, and we can run around with another character. Perfect. Do we jump? Yes, we jump. For joy, that is how we jump. Oh my god, look at that. Woohoo! That is really cool. So as promised, the only last bit I want to do is I want to change this background to something slightly darker, or not necessarily darker, but something more transparent so that the characters can be seen a little bit better. Let's just quickly do that. It's only, it's only going to take a second. In the selection menu under the designer, we can go and select each button character and the property that we need to change. That is, in fact, under appearance, color and opacity. And there's a color value that I can give that. So if I wanted to have that background, whoops, that's actually, that's not what I wanted. Sorry, <laughs> totally not what I wanted. This is uh, the background color. Sorry, <laughs> background color can be, can be changed this way. So if you want something funky, you know, we can make it, we can make it dark blue. I don't know. That might be actually, that might be quite funky. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go leave it a cohesive color and just lower down the lower down the value here a little bit yeah make it a bit darker something maybe a point point three overall let's do that point three but also i'd like to amend the alpha value here that's this thing alpha value that's the transparency of this thing so i'm going to make that maybe point six and when we do that we get we just get a little bit of the background shining through the button so point three and point six, and I'd like to do this over all the buttons. So I'm going to go and select every single button, holding down control. And that's kind of just my test button there. Doing that and under background color, let's go and say point three, point three, point three, and this is point six. There we go. Now they're all cohesive, and that looks a little bit better, I think. In fact, go file, save all, very important, every so often to do that. Let's just see what the what the visual impression is that we're getting here. Walking around. Yeah, look at that. That blends in a little bit better. I mean, it's still not great. It's not ideal, but we're going to mess with the buttons later on anyway. We're going to give it a different type of background color depending on if they're highlit or not so later on we're going to be able to look up in a kind of a little mini table which character is currently selected and that is the one that we're going to highlight in a different color and the other ones we're going to set up with a different color at that point as well so i just wanted to make it less okay less kind of less bright i'm still not convinced if it's if it's dark enough let's make it even darker don't want to get hung up in the details too early on in the game. Let's go and select that last button and go under color and opacity. And just go set that to point 0.1 perhaps. Point 0.1 overall. That is much darker. There. Am I being pernickety? Yes. But look how beautiful it looks now. There we go. We've done it. We've done it. We've made the menu appear and disappear at the touch of a button. And now any of our button clicks react in kind with switching out our Sinti character. That is very, very cool. You deserve a break. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how to change the outfits on the character so that we're going to apply not only a new skeletal mesh, we're going to apply a different material. And that's a really, really quick option. Join me for that.